Hey guys, this is Eric with Pixel Rookie, and this is episode 7 of our Kenshi series following the Chronicles of Rook. By now, you know before we get started with this episode, we gotta go over our fan art that you wonderful people have created and shared with me, but I'm gonna do it a little different this time. Demunsum from my Discord server actually made a fan song about Rook, so I'm gonna drop that in the background so you can enjoy it while I show a montage of the awesome artwork that you shared since last episode. One other difference is that I'm gonna share one of my favorite pieces for the end of the episode, caught a little reward for watching all the way through. Viciously murdered and captured before that And he was a slave of the holy nation And now and the rook has sworn to kill the holy nation And like created the whole new rally thing I hope you guys enjoyed the pieces this episode. I appreciate every one of you for taking the time to create fan art of the series, and if you would like your art to be featured in a future episode, feel free to join the Discord server and submit it under the fan art channel. The link's in the description below. Okay, so back to the series. Last episode, Rook's newest recruits took on their new names and they worked together to slowly build the foundations of New Raleigh. Though it was rough building up the perimeter wall with skin spiders and constant raids, they managed to push through. At the end of the episode, Rook took both Wansnot and Chris with them to finally begin new adventures, while Fravatar and Tal stayed behind to maintain their home and grow their supplies. What will they discover on their new adventures? The men just exited the gates of New Raleigh, but they weren't entirely sure of where they were going to go yet. Rook pulled out his map and the men looked over it. Part of the west was completely unexplored by the coast and they decided to head there and see what they could uncover on their way. Neither Chris nor Wands not have ever seen the coast before. They were excited at the idea of traveling to the ends of the world with Rook. The men set off in their brave new expedition sharing stories of what they'd hoped to find along their way. Their spirits were high. Well, that was until they found a hostile group of Shek called Kraus Chosen. Rook thought he could protect the men, but instead, they were all beaten to a pulp. <gasps> the enemy healed themselves up and left the unconscious adventurers to lay in the dirt. A few hours passed and the men came to and bandaged themselves up. No more than a few hundred yards from their home and they were already severely wounded. Morale slightly lower than just a few hours ago, and the men were limping back to New Raleigh to heal up. Okay, so now that they were fully recovered, they bid their farewells to Tao and Fravatar again while enduring jokes at their expense. Wow, that must have been some expedition, they said mockingly with big grins on their faces. Let's, uh, pretend that never happened, Rook told the men as they prepared for their, uh, first expedition uh, again. The gate closed behind them once again and they plotted their way towards the coast on their map. Even though their first attempt was a failure, the two men were excited to go on adventures with Rook like the ones he told him about when he was solo. And while Rook enjoyed traveling alone, he really did prefer the company of his men. Of course the trade-off was that they were far weaker than him and he'd have to help protect them in the face of danger. Where one stealthy man can sneak by trouble, add two men who can't sneak to save their lives to the mix and things get a little more… complicated. They were pressing onwards towards the coast until they saw something interesting nearby. They decided to investigate it. What they found was a bounty hunter camp with a group of men going about their business. The adventurers were curious of what they were doing there and approached one of the bounty hunters. She told them that they were looking for the Bugmaster. They never heard of the Bugmaster before, but she said that while not much is known about him, he supposedly has incredible loot but is incredibly dangerous as well. Maybe seeing the coast can wait. Like most of Rook's adventures in the past, they stumbled upon something with a lot of potential, so they decided to scour the surrounding area for this Bugmaster themselves. They traveled a little further until they stumbled upon another bounty hunter camp. They realized that they were actually traveling around the outside of a giant crater. 
And let's be real, where would a powerful and ominous being be found if not in the center of a massive crater? As the men drew closer to the lake in the middle of the crater, they discovered an outpost that wasn't too far from them. Could this be it? They could see the water from here. Nani? And out of nowhere, a skin spider came barreling towards them. They froze and noticed there was an entire cluster of them by the water. Time to change plans. They fell back, but the spider didn't pursue them. It was almost like it was guarding the area. Rook was going to sneak by them and continue on his own, but Wansnot and Chris both insisted they join him. They didn't want to miss out on finding the Bugmaster's treasure. They slowly crept down to the water, but one of the skin spiders noticed them and came into attack. Rook yelled to stand their ground. The three of them could take one out. That was until a second one flanked Rook and he had to focus his attention on it. These ugly creatures were massive and every hit they landed inflicted tons of damage. Rook wasn't sure they could hold the two of them off. About that time, the skin spider crashed its sharp limb into Rook and he blacked out. The other two fell immediately after as well. Wansnot was the last to go down, and as soon as he hit the ground, the spiders wandered off. Fortunately for the men, their behavior was quite strange here. Cool rain began falling over them. This helped wake them up from their forced slumber and they scrambled to patch each other up. Chris was hurt pretty badly. Rook looked at Wansnot and without having to say anything, he agreed that he would take Chris back to the bounty hunter camp to heal up while Rook continued on his own. Remember what I said about one sneaky boy compared to two clunky boys? Regardless of being clunky or not, Wansnot tried to be as stealthy as possible as he made his way out of this dangerous spider crater. Rook wished him luck and started swimming towards the unknown object in the lake. Wansnot ran into some trouble on his way out of the crater. No, 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 no. <laughs> they chased him to the edge of a steep drop off and watched as he crept away. Wansnot was happy Chris was unconscious and didn't hear the squeals of terror that he let out moments earlier. Even though he had some close calls, he got them back to safety and they laid down to rest, hoping that Rook returns in one piece. Meanwhile, Rook finally swam over to the unknown object. It was just an empty fallen tower that had nothing of interest in it. Rook was determined to find more though, and he went further south towards the other outpost. The rain helped his presence remain unknown as he stealthily ran past clusters of skin spiders patrolling the crater. In no time, he saw an ominous dark tower rising up above the crater. Lots of spiders were by it too. For the first time in a long time, Rook was nervous as he ran up the ramp to see what was inside. He made it into the top and entered the building. It was infested with spiders everywhere. They remained unaware of him, but that's when Rook felt an uneasy presence himself. He knew that this is where the Bugmaster was. This was a very dangerous situation to be in. At that moment, Rook did what any sane human wouldn't do and started sprinting past the dangerous spiders and up to the next floor. It was an almost completely empty room, but he glanced at an individual that was staring off in the corner by a chest. He ran up to the next floor and all he saw when he peeked into the opening were cages and another skin spider. Other than that, it was a dead end. Rook only had a split second to think and his mind was on one thing only, the treasure chest that the Bugmaster was standing over. Rook was fast, really fast. Before the massive cluster of spiders broke into the second floor, he ran over and opened up the chest. Rook only had a moment to look and what he found was terrifying. A giant chest filled to the brim with human teeth. Then he noticed there was an old piece of paper sticking out. It was some kind of map that the Bugmaster kept. He immediately grabbed it and stuffed it into his pocket. At this point, the spiders were pouring into the room and as Rook began to run to the back wall for space, the Bugmaster broke out of his trance and without any emotion, he started towards Rook. He had no other options. He lowered his shoulder and ran as fast as he could into the cluster of spiders and skillfully slid through their masses down the ramp into the first floor. As he broke free from the horde, he sprinted out the door and down the ramp. As he circled the spire, he laughed out loud in disbelief of what just happened. He came face to face with this fabled bug master and lived with proof. He found a safe place to hide and he tore the map out of his pocket to see what he actually took from there. It was a map and it was pointing to one location on the far end of the opposite corner of the world, the Ashlands. Most of what was included on the paper was gibberish, but he thought that he understood the meaning of this paper. The Bugmaster was amassing an army of spiders to go to this location and kill whoever was there. This was the rumored treasure that the bounty hunters were speaking of. Nothing of upfront value, but this was still a great treasure to find. Rook didn't know much about the Ashlands other than the fact that it was considered the most dangerous place in the entire land and virtually nobody who goes there comes back. He only knew one thing, a place like that had to have some amazing treasures to be found. He marked the location to his own map and plotted his way back to the camp where the other men were resting at. He had a lot to discuss with them. Rook made it back with no issue and was exhausted from what just happened. He laid down to rest up with the men and told them about the Bugmaster and his discovery on the map. He tried to emphasize the dangers and risks of going to the Ashlands, but they were both inspired by Rook and didn't want to let him do this alone. At that point, things were settled. They left early in the morning straight towards the Ashlands, feeling a mixture of excitement and nervousness. As they traveled, the men talked about what they hoped to find at their destination while admiring the beautiful vistas of cities and mountains off in the distance. 
But like all their travels, they found empty ruins in the swamp just east of their home, so they detoured off to investigate what goodies they could find. While it was completely empty, they did notice another outpost not too far from there. It was a small outpost, and it looked like a hideout for a group of men called the Red Sabres. As they swam to the shore, they quickly learned that the Red Sabres weren't exactly the friendliest of folks as they attacked Rook and his men on sight. Wansnot and Chris were trying to fight the man off, but were still unskilled in combat. Rook was slowly coming to help the men. Slowly. Hurry up, dude. There we go. Finally. <gasps> Wansnot looted the bandages off the unconscious body, and he liked the rattan hat that he was wearing, so he decided to take it for himself. At that moment, more men were coming out of the swamp waters towards their group. They engaged them for another fight. Thanks to Rook's mighty falling sun, their men didn't stand a chance. After the fighting was finished, Rook told the other men to stay back while he checks out this hideout. He walked in and the place was crawling with Red Saber men. They didn't really seem to notice him until he stepped forward to introduce himself. He was immediately cut off by a really big guy in the back of the room. His face was a mixture of confusion and anger, but Rook could tell that he wasn't happy to see an outsider here. At his word, all the men got up to attack. Rook knew he was the boss here. In fact, he was a wanted man for 10,000 cats by the Sheks. Rook could escape now and most likely outrun the men, but instead he yelled out for his allies to join him. He was going to take them on and capture the Red Saber boss to collect another bounty. It was a personal thing, but Rook found great satisfaction adding notches to the number of bounties he collected. He was completely surrounded but kept his cool. This was nothing compared to the Bugmaster's lair and he knew he could take them on. Chris and Wands not weren't in the same situation. They were slowly getting whittled down. Even though they were helping take some of the men off Rook, he knew they were in danger here. He called out and ordered them to run back to their home and wait for him there. He'd handle the rest. They looked at each other and gave Rook a nod as they took off out the door and started running away. Rook was quick with his katana. It was more wieldy indoors and he flew from one man to another, blocking most of their blows and striking them in passing. As he was hoping, the Red Saber boss got frustrated watching him beat on his men and stepped into the fight. This was his chance. One of his blows knocked the wind out of the boss and he could see the concern on his face while he struggled to catch his breath and get back up. He focused his attention on the boss and tried landing as many hits on him while blocking the incoming swings from his men in between strikes. He beat him back into a wall and continued his aggressive assault on him. A few more hits landed and the big man fell. His men seemed extra angry at this but Rook didn't really care about that. In one swift motion, Rook kicked the boss's weapon off the ground into his hands and stuffed it into his bag, ducked down and scooped up the huge man up over his shoulder. It was time to get out of here. He plodded towards New Raleigh and as he ran out the door, a swarm of men followed close behind cursing at him as they tried to stop him. Rook had the biggest grin as he navigated through the swamp's uneven grounds with such finesse. He knew that they just bagged another 10,000 cats with this random visit to the Red Saber hideout. It didn't take long for Rook to lose the men and meet up with Chris and Wansnot. He told them about what happened as they stripped the wanted boss down and Chris stuffed his clothing into his backpack. Rook told them to head back to New Raleigh while he'd claim the bounty and meet back up with them. Well, Wansnot and Chris ran into some trouble on their way back home. There were swamp ninjas sneaking around the swamplands and they jumped them. At least they made it back in one piece, even if Wansnot had to carry Chris to the last leg of the trip. There was a big sigh of relief as Wansnot walked through the front gate. They were back home and safe again. In the meantime, Rook was moving as quickly as he could to Squin to turn in his bounty. Running through the city brought flashbacks of his first bounty he caught, which felt like an eternity ago. He saw the police station ahead and entered. He looked like a proud child, showing off his catch to the Sheck Guardian who couldn't care less about the bounty. He simply tossed Rook a bag filled with 10,000 cats and hoisted the large man over his shoulders and ran upstairs to where they held the prisoners. Speaking of cherished memories of days long past, there she was, Tora the Fearless, still alive and well and being held prisoner. Hey, at least now she had someone to keep her company for the duration of their stay. Rook had no other reason to be in town, and he took off running back towards New Raleigh. Back at home base, the adventurers were healing up from their travels while Tao and Frabatar continued maintaining New Raleigh. Tao was not only keeping the men's food supplies fully stocked, but his farming skills were becoming quite high. Frabatar was taking those food supplies and cooking it into edible food for the men. He was becoming quite the chef. These two were the foundation of their base of operations, which allowed the rest of the men to go on their expeditions. Rook returned, and the adventurers were fully recovered. Wansnot equipped the Red Saber boss's armor, and Rook gave him his weapon too. It was a much finer quality than his current weapon. Chris went to their food storage and stocked up on more supplies for their upcoming travels. He wanted to make sure that they were fully stocked. They didn't know how long it would take to go to the dreaded Ashlands. The men bid their farewells and met outside of the East Gate. It slowly closed behind them as they exited New Raleigh for an unknown amount of time. They gathered around Rook's map and plotted the ominous place as their final destination again and began their expedition through the Swamplands. 
They exchanged stories of the excitement of the raid on the Red Sabres with Rook and complimented him on his great fighting skills that led him to taking on their boss while being completely surrounded and still managed to take him out and capture him. Rook just laughed and told them that if they continued questing with him, they would learn to fight like this too. During their conversation, Rook realized that the city of Shark was directly in their path and the men agreed that it would be good to stop there briefly and see what they could find. But of course, in classic Rook expedition fashion, they discovered ruins nearby and they decided to detour from their detour and check out the ruins quickly. It was dark and quiet. It looked like some kind of old library that was long forgotten. Rook had the men wait outside while he would work on this old lock that kept him out of whatever riches that might be inside. It was a tricky lock, but he eventually bested it. The door slowly creeped open. Clearly it hasn't been opened in ages. Rook stepped inside and there were mostly old ruined books, but Rook saw a chest in the corner of the room. There was still hope for some real treasure. His lock picking skills were quite refined now and he had no trouble picking the lock. Inside he found old maps. This seemed to be the trend of their recent treasures as of late. No matter though, Rook carefully folded them up and put them in his pocket. Treasure maps led to better riches, just for another day. While this old library didn't have anything else of value, Rook carefully looked over the maps and began noting down the destinations on his map. These locations were spread all across the land and they'd have to plan separate expeditions later on to see what goodies they had locked away. The one that interested him the most was an Ashlands dome that was not far from their final destination. They could most likely explore there while visiting the Ashlands. Rook returned to the others and shared his findings with them. It was late and they wanted to get to Shark now. They were heading their way, pleased with new locations to eventually explore. That was, until they were ambushed by more swamp ninjas. They hid in the overgrowth of the swamplands and caught the men completely off guard. Rook told the men to attack, but these guys were quick. They caught the men off guard and they were really hurting them. Rook tried to lure most of the men away from Wansnot and Chris. He was inflicting massive damage with each swing, but a swamp ninja skillfully landed a blow that knocked Rook out. The other men panicked and Chris was taken down in no time. Wansnot tried being defensive, hoping Rook would wake up soon and help. He wasn't so fortunate though and was taken down. The swamp ninjas took off and left the men for dead. Rook was a tenacious man though, and when he regained consciousness, he mended himself and everyone up. Chris was hurt pretty badly, but Wansnot was able to walk. Rook gathered Chris up and they made it to Shark shortly after. They immediately found the closest bar and stepped inside. They took a moment to soak in the hustle and bustle of the bar, but Rook found the beds in the back and paid for a bed for Chris. Wansnot laid down next to him. Rook was about to lay down to rest too, but he saw a man at one of the tables looking at him like he wanted to speak, so Rook approached him. His name was Hammett and he thought Rook looked like a seasoned adventurer. He asked Rook what his thoughts were on slavery. By now, we all know that Rook is pretty anti-slavery and he expressed his sentiments to Hammett. Hammett smiled a sad smile and told him that the slavers took someone he loved from him, branded her and forced her into the cruel life of a slave. He wanted vengeance, but he couldn't do it alone. Rook explained what his group was doing here and how they were trying to find better loot, train his men, fund New Raleigh with their expeditions, and overthrow the Holy Nation. He struck a deal with this man. If he joined Rook's men in their cause, he would lead them to the destruction of the slavers as well. Hammett was moved by Rook's offer and he joined their group. Rook's head was still throbbing from the beating they took from the swamp ninjas, so he told Hammett to wait there while they rested up and he would introduce them to the others when they woke up. Late that night, the men recovered and got out of bed. Rook made quick introductions and suggested they speak more on the road while they used the cover of night to their advantage. The next nearest city on the way to the Ashlands was Morn. They could use that as their next checkpoint and began heading east. They left Shark and the men were taking this time to get to know their new recruit. They traveled through the swamp and then through the desert while learning about Hammett's past. He owned a small farm but slavers attacked and while he escaped, his wife didn't. He was laying low in Shark while plotting revenge and that's when he met Rook. He was definitely filled with determination. The men were happy to have him join the team. Before they knew it, they found themselves walking through the gates of Morn. Of course, Rook had to brag about his accomplishments here as soon as they stepped into the city, but they enjoyed his tales. As Rook recalled, there wasn't really anything of interest in Morn, and they just passed through and continued traveling east. They were lucky and avoided any dangers until they arrived right outside of the territory known as the Ashlands. Rook felt uneasy about what was ahead. He could see from the looks of the other men that they felt it too. He made a decision and began sifting through his backpack. He gave all of his spare loot that they found along the way to Hammett to hold on for safe keepings. He was going to traverse the Ashlands alone. The men didn't argue. They were hungry for adventure, but everyone sensed that they were in over their heads. There was a hill nearby where they could hide out and they had good visibility of the surrounding area. They should be able to see trouble before it sees them. Rook sighed a heavy breath and gave them one final nod. He usually felt calm when he was alone, but this was different. For the first time since the Bugmaster's lair, Rook felt fear in the pit of his stomach, but also a wave of excitement about going into the unknown as he began running into the Ashlands to see what the Bugmaster was plotting against. And this is where we'll end this episode. What will Rook find there? Will he and the others be safe? Stay tuned for the next episode to find out.
As promised at the beginning of the video, here's one of my favorite fan art submissions this time around. It's an amazing piece done by Tarvin, and the reason I picked it was because it encapsulates the men leaving for their first adventure together so freaking well. I also love the fact that it's mostly black and white minus the rays of the rising sun in the background reflecting off the surfaces and of course Rook's red glasses to add a flare of color to the mix. Great work Tarvin, I appreciate you taking the time to make this. I also want to shout out my newest patrons, Cardikit, Pierce, Kenneth McIntyre, Brandon Miller, Blinkstrike, Digital Tomato, and Topi. Thank you guys so much for becoming patrons of the channel. Your support is helping me get closer to achieving my ultimate goal of turning this into a full-time gig, and I'm very grateful for your help. And of course a huge thanks to all my patrons who are helping support this cause. I cannot express my gratitude enough for your support. As always guys, thanks for watching this video, and until next time, have a good one.